Hi and welcome back to the tiny French Bacon. <gasps> no! Quarantine edition. It's Pie Week. Bakers, welcome to Pie Week. Today, for your signature, we would like you to make a double crusted fruit pie. We have two hours to make a uh, sweet or short crust, any kind of fruit pie, but the pastry has to hold together when you cut. So again, you have two hours. It's a bake. Remember back in school when you had a test in your favorite subject? This is how I feel about fruit pies. I love eating them, making them, and if I may say so myself, I think I'm pretty good at this. Today I'm going to show you how I make my strawberry rhubarb pie. I start with a flaky, almost rough puff pastry using only all-purpose flour, some salt, and an incredible amount of butter. For 250 grams of flour, I use about 230 grams of butter. I know it's an insane amount of butter, it's nearly 50-50, but it's what makes it so flaky. I cover every piece of butter with some flour before smooshing them with my finger. I do everything by hand because I've done this pastry dough so many times and I know the consistency I'm looking for. If you've never done it before, I would recommend using a food processor for the first couple of times. Once I incorporated the cold water, I smoosh it with my hands. I am kind of lucky, I guess, that I have very cold hands at all times, so I can manipulate my pie dough with my finger for a long time but I did switch to a knife after a while. I'm gonna use the cling film to knead it a bit. It did come together as one big mass, but it's still pretty shaggy. However, I don't wanna knead it too much or it's gonna make it tough by development of gluten once you knead. So I used the plastic to help it stick to itself. And once it's fully encased in the plastic, I can be a little rougher with it. I'll still have huge pockets of butter surrounded by the kind of smooth pastry. And that's what I'm showing right there. And this is great. That's what's going to give us the flakiness. I always smooth it with a rolling pin once it's in the plastic to make it flatter. And that's what is going to make it also cool faster in the fridge. And this is where it's going, in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. During that time, I'm gonna make the strawberry rhubarb compote. I drain my strawberries, removing all of the liquid that might be a problem for cooking the pie. And my rhubarb has a third cup of sugar and a quarter cup of cornstarch to it. And that's mostly to sweeten and to thicken. Moisture in fruit pies is kind of the enemy. It's gonna make your dough kind of gummy and not flake as much. I prepare my egg wash using one egg and two tablespoons of water. It's a lot of water compared to most egg washes, but I don't like it too thick. I like an egg wash that's very runny and you wanna make sure it's really whisked together. Once the rhubarb and the strawberry have fully softened, I put them aside, waiting for it to be ready. Always taste what you're cooking. And it was good, but it wasn't really well-rounded a flavor, and I decided to add a big dollop of that Mexican vanilla paste that is very potent. I added about two teaspoons worth, mushed it in, tasted it again, and boy, was that good. Time to prepare our tin. I use glass tin because I don't have any ceramic. Uh, in a professional setting, once I've used ceramic tins and they are really nice and give you a very crisp pastry dough, but at home, a glass dish is perfectly acceptable since the ceramic are kind of hard to come by. I always butter and flour any of my dishes and I've never had a problem to unstick anything this way. You can put the excess flour on your counter because it's time to roll our pastry. And you see how flaky that pastry is? We can see the little flakes coming off. And 
don't hesitate to put a lot of flour on your bench because again it is pretty much 50 50 flour and butter ratio so it's gonna it can take a bit of flour on the bench really it's gonna incorporate just fine once you have enough to cover the bottom of your pie dish just cut around and do not discard the scraps just set them aside. I used the roll around the rolling pin method and I should have floured my bench a little more, but I used a bench scraper to get my pastry all in one piece without any stickage. And I roll it back onto the pie dish, tuck in the corners very gently. Again, I have cold hands, so I can manipulate the pastry dough with my fingers. If you have warm hands, maybe use a piece of pastry. A bit of egg wash on the bottom to uh, prevent any soakage of moisture into the dough and back in the fridge it goes while I take care of the lid. It was a requirement that it is a double lid fruit pie. I personally prefer single lid fruit pie, I like a lot of fruit for pastry ratio. But I don't make the rules here, Mary Berry does. So gather all of your scraps and roll them up and put them back in the fridge. See, flatten it, increasing the surface area to make sure it is cold faster. It has a lot of butter, so it's important that it gets cold. Here what I'm doing is I'm gathering all of the sides using my rolling pin, making sure that once I roll it, it doesn't crack as much. And once it's time to roll, see, it kind of like cracked a bit, but no like huge crack in the center of your pie dough. And what I did effectively, it's kind of great rough buff. There's so much butter in that flaky dough pastry that by gathering the sheets and reforming it and rolling again, I kind of made rough buff. I'm putting it aside in the freezer once it's flat while I take care of cleaning my bench. Here's a little tip. I use bench scrapers to remove any type of flour or butter that is on my bench. It's my little tip for you on how to clean Anything that you roll out, I use that for kneading bread and roll it out pastry. It's time for the assembly. So this case is very cold. I put it in the freezer because I'm gonna make design. This is just a little round cutter and I'm gonna make polka dot design since my filling is bright red, thanks to the rhubarb and the strawberry. And it's important to have it cold once you're using cutters so that your edges are very crisp. I dock the bottom of my pastry case and I put the fruit at the very last minute. Uh, if you put your fruit in your pastry case too fast, it can soak up the bottom and no one wants a soggy bottom. And <gasps> There you go. Putting the top once it has a design is kind of a perilous adventure, but if your pastry case is really cold, it will come together in one big piece. I use scissors to trim the edge of my pie. People don't tend to use scissors in the kitchen. I find them very useful. And here I'm gathering the sides together. You might have seen me put a bit of egg wash on the sides to glue it. And I'm gonna crimp. I use the two finger, one finger method to crimp my pastry dough and you can be rough with it. Like, don't hesitate. I see people thinking that those edges are gonna be tough if you overwork it. Realistically, there's so much butter, you're fine. There is that saying that pastry dough and any type of dough really can smell fear. Just don't hesitate, like, be chill, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna taste good. There's so much butter, sugar, it's gonna taste delicious. I am sending it with some coarse sugar for color and texture, and I'm baking it on a tray. Unless you want to scrape out some fruit goop at the bottom of your oven, I would recommend for fruit pie always to put it on a tray. And we're done! So let's check back and see what we got from the oven. The smell was incredible. There is some leakage, but I think it looks pretty dope. Three, two, one, you're done.
this is what we got and please let it cool down before slicing it and eating it. It's a pandemic, so the judge are gonna be me and Ted. Let's see what we have to say. Yep, yeah, I can't see you. Hello. How's the pie? Ready to go now. That says it all, it was delicious, it looked really good. I docked myself half a point for the simplicity of it. Strawberry rhubarb is not very inventive and Ted docked half a point because we had a bit of leakage. So 8.5 out of 9. That was Pie Week Signature. Thanks for sticking around, please stay safe. And for any information visit tinyfrenchbacon.com. Now, some bonus footage. It's strawberry rhubarb lava. Dun, dun, dun.